I would introduce our intern, but she's sleeping right now. And I'm kind of joking, it's our baby. <laughs> Oh, nobody's in there. So before we get started, I thought I'd go over our, our forestry tools that we choose and why. A couple of them I got to do a little bit of sharpening up on, just a quick maintenance. Uh, I'll go over that, so I'll co come along. You can join me and uh, see what's what. We've been doing this for so many years, we've kind of got it narrowed down to what really works in a, in a pretty small amount of tools. So first off, we'll ta always take with us uh, a one-man crosscut saw. This is a five-foot crosscut saw that's got a helper handle on it that Mrs. W and I can use together if we need to, or I can use it by myself. Of course, one of my favorite tools is the Rogue Forestry Rake. It's really good for uh, when you have to rake up sticks and needles and you don't want to un disturb the understory or the mulch too much. It's, it's a good way to get to grab things to get out of the way. Loppers are really good. We have a, a smaller pair of loppers here uh, that Mrs. W, these are Coronas that she likes. And then uh, I think these are, I think they're both Coronas. And then we have a larger pair for, that I, I typically like for a little bit heavier, heavier duty work. Uh, we'll take flagging. Uh, before we get started, we'll kind of walk together how we want the trail to go, uh, where we want it to do. We want to mark any dangerous trees or anything like that. It just kind of helps us keep on task and focus as to what we're doing. Um, we'll take a, a forestry hoe. This is also a, a rogue hoe that's good for chopping roots and grubs and all of that. I keep these really sharp, and that's why the tools that I, uh, that I uh, put nice edges on, I make these sheaths out of uh, old fire hose and tie a knot with a bungee cord in them just to keep them, keep them sharp because they work a lot better uh, when they're sharp. We'll take a, a, a saw. I'll be taking the samurai here saw. Mrs. W doesn't typically like to use these. She prefers the loppers, so I'll just take this by myself. Um, with a belt loop because I'll, I'll, I always will take my small forest axe as well. So I'll wear this on the, on the aluminum sheath on the back uh, as well as a sheath knife. I like a bushcraft style sheath knife. I'll always take that with me uh, and the saw. So those are kind of the three tools and everything we'll wear on this belt that I will carry personally. Uh, we'll take a sharpening puck, uh, the Lansky puck right here, which we'll use in a minute. And we'll also take a, a uh, Pulaski. This is a rogue Pulaski. Uh, slash axe for grubbing and cutting roots uh, with the sheath on it as well. Um, apart from that, the only thing else I'm going to have in the box will be uh, about a, a nice uh, 10 inch or 12 inch mill bastard file uh, for anything that gets really dinged or needs to be sharpened up, hits a rock. And WD-40 is really a great, uh, not only is it's not the best lubricant, but it is a lubricant, but it's, more than that, it's a protectant. And the fur that we have it, and the ponderosas have so much sap in them that they'll they'll uh, oftentimes build up on the tools and the saws. And just a little spray of this helps to kind of keep that clean. So uh, keeping sap, you know, I guess managing the sap on the tools is the primary role for this. I, there may be something better, but I, I like WD-40. It's, uh, it's easy, it's readily available, and um, just it works really good for that. We talk so much about all of these fancy tools and sharpeners, and, I, and I'm guilty as anyone on this channel uh, to take care of our tools and all that. But you know what the reality of it is, is when you get back to basics, pretty much everything you need to, to, man to take care of on your homestead or home or farm or garden tools uh, is right here, is a, is a Lansky puck and a good quality uh, mill bastard file. Um, the, the tools, your shovels, you know, a lot of the people neglect this. They, you don't think too much about uh, taking a minute with a file and uh, putting, putting an edge on your uh, tools. Uh, shovels or hose or rakes or anything like that and it just takes a minute to do them and if you keep up on them um, and just keep those those burrs knocked off uh, it makes a big difference um, the performance the way they cut so how I'll typically do it and this is the same for any shovel or hoe is is uh, you'll get a rolled edge on the back kind of hold this flat to the back edge of it there because they're going to be cut as a chisel like this and uh, knock that off knock up knock anything off make sure it's smooth and then 
take it down to a point. When it comes to your axes, I wouldn't recommend you use a file. It's, it's a little bit too coarse. If you take care of them and look after them, if you just eat, I do this every day if it needs it or not. Even when I put them, put them away and I know they're sharp, I'll just take a minute and hit them. And the Lansky puck or any sort of a puck like this that has a small pocket puck is, is, is about as good as, as you're going to get. It's got a coarse on one side and it's got a fine on the other. And uh, keep, put a little, uh, don't put oil on it, but put a little uh, diesel or kerosene on there, anything like that to kind of cut the chips and, and move it. And, uh, and just a, a quick touch up in a circular motion. Imagine when, you, when you're imagining this, imagining you're holding that angle just enough to where you can shave a piece of that, a microscopic piece of that stone off there. And if you look after your axes, you don't need to do this much. A lot of folks are not aware of this, but, but you can sharpen your loppers uh, with a, a stone uh, very effectively. And I, I think a lot of folks throw these things away, think, you know, not, not or just figuring that they're worn out, but the, the, a good pair like this should last you a lifetime. Um, and w this, is a, uh, this is the bypass type, you know, where it comes along, it cuts like a pair of scissors. There's also the mandrel type, which the blade will actually come down against um, a mandrel or a flat spot. You can sharpen e either one like this. So all you do is, is look at that angle, and just like your ax, use the fine side of your, of your stone. And if you've been using them, that's all the better because they've got a layer of sap on them. Don't neglect the inside where it's hard to get. You can go back and forth there and, and watch that angle by how it removes the sap like that. And then give it a circular motion. Just takes a minute and then flatten out that backside. The backside will be flat. And so flatten out any burrs on there like that right there and you have it. When it comes to your saws, you know, for, for most guys, there's not a lot, of, there's not a lot you can do uh, as far as uh, sharpening, unless you've had very special training. And that, that, that comes to, uh, that, that's referring to the, well, I'm not gonna take it all the way out, especially the crosscut saws. A crosscut saw, uh, if you have it uh, professionally sharpened, and there's more and more guys out there that are able, offering a service to do that, you'll have to mail it in uh, to have them sharpened. Um, it, if it's taken care of, uh, it will last you an entire season, uh, a year or more, uh, if, if you don't cut a lot of bark with it and you don't uh, drop it in the dirt. So uh, the, as far as maintenance goes, just make sure you, you c cover it, wipe it down with an oil, um, protect it, protect the teeth, make sure it doesn't, don't throw it in the back of your truck and, and, and get a good sheath for it, um, and then cover it with oil so that it doesn't rust. That's the, that's the main thing you can do, and keep, of course, keep your handles tightened. Uh, the Japanese saws, a similar case for that, they are exceedingly effective. The best being, uh, I like this brand here, the Ichibans, as well as the Silkies are wonderful uh, saws, the best of the best. Um, can they be resharpened by, uh, the, by a homeowner? No, no, probably not. There may be a very tiny few, few people who have uh, dedicated themselves to doing this, but the blades are just not that expensive. And again, they last a long time. So they're kind of made, they, they are somewhat disposable, but the amount of use, the amount of work that they do, uh, to me, uh, make them more than worth um, that, that small inconvenience. All right, let's head on down and we'll uh, get started. Were you frightened at all? Yeah! <laughs> I mean, it's not so far, but I do have the babies in the car. It's <laughs> a tight fit, heart racer. Got my almost dog with me.
Cody and I are going to work on my running trail, right? That's right. So what else is it used for? This is the last, well, we may help you with the dirt bikes pounded in. So when you're, when you're limbing, just figure everything, me standing on the pegs about so high. So I will do the lower limbs and you do the I'll, upper limbs? I'll do the higher ones. This is one of the last sections that we, uh, well, you've been running through it, but it's just a little bit tight and you get kind of scratched up and all that. And it's a beautiful stand of timber and it's something you've never seen before. So we're going to start right here. This is where we'll, the entry will be and uh, you'll see some brand new stuff today. Sounds great. All right. First thing we need to do is get this out of the way. Do you think we should introduce our intern? Yes. Okay. Go grab her. I would introduce our intern, but she's sleeping right now. And I'm kind of joking. It's our baby. <laughs> She's pretty cute. We'll introduce Dee when she wakes up. She's sleeping right now. But we uh, we always brought Jack with us for whatever we did. And, and we figured no reason not to today. Speaking of Jack, Jack should, would be here with us. But he's he's got a little bit of a sore throat today. And he had a pretty big day yesterday at homeschooling. So... He's uh, taking it easy today, and it's just the three of us. Okay, you ready to get started? Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing, we've got this log uh, in the way. It's a little bit too big to, it's a little bit too big to move, so let's just buck it in half so we can drag it out of the way. Okay. Uh, the question always comes up, uh, how come we're not using a chainsaw? You know, with it's sometimes it's just nice, when we come out here, this is our favorite thing to do, and kind of what we do for a therapeutic thing. Uh, and the chainsaws and all that take away from the, the quiet. The quiet, the experience. So uh, we like to do it with traditional tools. It takes a little bit longer, but it's it's what we do for fun anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And it's less gear to put on and yeah. eye protection and all that kind of stuff. A lot so. less trouble. All right, yeah. pull that out and uh, we'll buck that in half. I have a question. Yeah. Who is this? Well, I don't know. Have we given this one a name yet? I don't know. So it's commonplace to give all crosscut saws female names. This is one that your dad gave me. Huh. So maybe we should call it, I don't know what we well, should call it. Well, it says Penn Slate, so maybe we should call it Penny. Penny? Why oh, not? Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> so I'm Unless gonna, we want someone to name it after somebody. I brought a helper handle. These little or uh, smaller saws like this uh, are nice uh, if they have a extra hole here. Then we can use what they call a help, helper handle. So it takes a, a two-man saw and turns it into a, uh, or one-man saw, and turns it into a one-man, one-woman saw. Are we doing this together? Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on the side of a saw for a while. Well, this one's this one's a whole lot easier there. All right, pick a spot in the middle where kind of the weight will be the same, and then we'll uh, cut that in half. Okay. I'm using one of my Christmas gifts for the first time. What's that? New gloves. New gloves. Super soft. Super soft, the ones that are not all dried out. That's right. Okay. That's pretty, pretty heavy. Why don't we cut it right here? That way we don't have to get it in the, uh, uh, in the dirt. Okay. Let, let's be realistic. It's supposed to be 50-50, but it's not quite. 50-50? <laughs> All right. Does that work on you? Uh, work for the on the uphill side there? Yeah. Okay. Good. okay, you ready? Yeah. Hang on. Is that, is that in your way? No, it'll be okay. Okay, go. You don't have any noodles coming. It's dry wood, why? dirt here pretty soon. Okay, so just uh, I'll push down a little bit. Okay. Change the angle. All right, uh, grab that saw. Let's take, get it to get out of the way there. Let's take, get this out of the way. I think we're going to need to cut that one more time. Okay. It's still pretty long. There's some dry firewood. Yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't we hit it right here? It's true, isn't it? it? It's not covered yet. Plus it's fun, don't you think? 
chipping? I don't know if it's fun. It was totally fun last year. Didn't you like it? Uh, yeah. It, it, you yeah. like the power. It was fun. Let's take it right, right here, maybe. Okay. Now we can manage that. Hang on, let me get that mark out of the way here. Ready? Okay. We'll go up, lift it up, and then we'll drop in. A little bit of a bind there. That should do it. Okay. All right, lighten up. I'm going to hit the dirt here. Okay, just hold it. Keep it from falling. That's it, right there. Okay, great. Okay, you can put that on the tailgate. I'm sorry, but that's all we had time for today. We didn't quite make it uh, as far as I thought I would, but we'll pick it up uh, tomorrow. I, I think, you know, Mrs. W and I, we talked about um, the future of the channel and kind of the direction we want to go. And I, we've always enjoyed making these uh, more of a vlog style of videos, and I would like to do more of them. I don't do a lot of them because, well, in all, all honesty, you guys, not very many of you watch them. Um, it, well, it seems like, that maybe that's not true. About 25% of the videos, 25% uh, uh, of the audience of the videos are subscribers. And the subscribers um, that follow the channel really enjoy these, um, probably more than anything else. However, um, new people or people that aren't familiar with the channel or, or what modern homesteading is um, don't tend to watch these. And so uh, that's kind of why I got away from them, because the numbers were so dismal. So if you'd like to see more of these, um, please let me know in the comments. And it's your, um, you, we need your help. It's your responsibility to support us by clicking the thumbs up and commenting and, and being involved, you know, and, and, sh and giving us the feedback telling us um, that you like these and you'd like to see more of the family involved so thanks for watching don't forget to uh, support our channel um, in in both those ways thanks for watching we'll see you guys uh, on the next video